Um, I think people are waiting online. I think it's a big challenge. And I, I, I thank the organizers for organizing a hybrid event because this is the most complex thing you can imagine. Uh, to be servant to the people in the room and as well being servant to the people outside with all the content and the tools, etc. So this is kind, kind of the complex stuff. Thank you very much for daring. Um, I'm now, and we have talked quite some time about you, but before I introduce Martin Rauch to all of you, many of you will of course know him, we have a Slido question which uh, leads directly to the subject. We want to know from all of you and for the ones being amongst you who just freshly onboarded this conference, please go on slido.com or use uh, the QR code and put in the conference code 234. We have a question, building with earth, would you want to live in a house constructed out of earth? So the question is not if you want to build it as an architect, that also is very nice as we heard from Anna Heringer already. It is rather the question, would you want to live in a house? Uh, whoever constructed it, uh, maybe Martin Rau. Um, that we want to know. Please, we are, as always, asking for honest answers. Therefore, it's anonymous. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, look. A sixth out of all, no, but 85, 82, more than 80%, more than four-fifths uh, of our dear audience wants to live in a house built of earth. Um, so saying that, thank you all very much. I want to introduce Martin Rauch. Together with Anna Heringer, he, uh, if I'm right, he was the winner of the 2021 New European Bauhaus Award in the category Techniques, Materials and Processes for Construction and Design. Inter interestingly enough, he doesn't come to clay through architecture, but through his severe experiences as a ceramist, ceramicist, sculpturist, oven builder, and through his extensive work in Africa in very early years. So he put it all together. And I read something about you and I love this. If I'm right, you were asked by Matteo Thun in your, one of your final exams or in one of your exams at the Academy of Applied Arts in Vienna to create a tea set. But instead of creating that tea set, you refused. And what did you do? You wrote a broad study about the creative use of clay in construction contexts. I hope you got the exam. So I'm very honored to now introduce and leave the floor to Martin Rauch. We are so much looking forward to your 20 minutes. And afterwards, we want to embrace your questions from here and online. Um, <clears throat> yeah, good, good afternoon. Um, I hope you can hear me. and. Uh, I, I, it is a honor for me to speak with uh, to you, and uh, I will uh, share uh, the, the slide um, first. So that's good. And um, yeah, I want to speak today about uh, the um, poor Earth, the sky, uh, scaling up to Earth, uh, and the experience of the last uh, 35 years I'm working with really uh, earth construction and rent earth. And um, I have started in 80, uh, 1984 and 90, uh, 1999, I built my own atelier. And we are since uh, working as a, 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 a construction firm with about uh, 30 people with Re, uh, rent earth contractor, planning and design construction, research, teaching, especially film work design, machinery design, it's like, like this. And, and, and in the last uh, 20 years, we make really large prefabrication construction and prefabricated pre 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 production. Most of the world still built with Earth. We said one third of the people are living still in Earth construction. And I say, Earth is a very important building material, not only in the past, it is a, a very important building material, material for the future. And if you go over the world, you can see a lot of different uh, buildings, large scales in earth construction. And also in Europe, the traditional 
building material of earth, it is available, not so much, but it was stopped during the industrialization. It was not necessary to build again in earth in, 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 in Europe, only after crisis, after the second war, and then they give always a little bit renaissance uh, of earth construction. And now it is a uh, renaissance uh, who will not go back. I think it is a renaissance now for earth construction and it can scaling up like a rocket. And um, what is uh, in, for me important, if I want to build an earth house in a modern style, so it is very important that you can see from outside that it is an earth house. It is a material based architectural design. And um, so I planned together with Roger Boltzhauser 2008, my own house. It is like a, a self experiment, how to live in an earth house. It is three story high, uh, supported. All the weight is on the rent earth wall. It is 45 thick earth wall and uh, inside isolation with wheat with, uh, and inside plaster. It has a very short uh, footprint, no concrete plate, only um, a, a, a small foundation with uh, trust lime. It is the Roman concrete and um, there is a, and the, the, the staircase and all you can really uh, uh, also see the material in his, his, in his row content. And also outside, it is the ramped earth uh, uh, um, uh, surface. It is not protected. It is no stabilized. It is only poor earth, unstabilized earth with no cement. And um, inside, there is the white plaster. It is, uh, you can make it very light. You can build very exactly. And also the, the ramped earth floor is the same material as the walls. It is only protected with wax. What is important for all my, uh, my work, it is that we are always using excavation from the site. We don't use some material from, from a, a gravel pit. It is the, the, the excavation is the most important uh, raw material for the earth construction. And if the circle is very small, so it is really healthy for people and, and uh, nature. And um, what is unstabilized ramped earth? It is only stone and clay and earth as uh, it's together. It is the right mix. It is only dry. It is not, uh, um, uh, it is uh, uh, not, um, it is uh, only dried and no additive in there. And if this circle, if the excavation, you take the 100% earth, fill it in, in shattering, ram it by hand or by pneumatic uh, machinery, then you have the poor element and uh, you can transport it to the site and then you set up this crane and, and then uh, you can retouch the, the, um, the, the joints and you can build the house, live in the house. And if you deconstruct it back to the earth so you can use it again or it doesn't matter if it go to, back to the earth. And um, this wall if is, water, is not waterproof, the earth construction. The joint you can uh, put with water and the same material, you don't see the joints uh, afterwards. The av advantages are it is 100% natural, recycled bar, 100%. No disposal fees because uh, it is in future, it's very important with the excavation, it's very expensive to deposit temperature regulation, moisture regulation. It is easy to repair. It is CO2 neutral, high thermal mass noise reduction, fire resident, uh, redundant, uh, light fastness, uh, unquil haptics, antimicrobiologic and outdoor, redu outdoor reducing. You see, there is a lot of positive uh, 
uh, uh, sets for the Earth construction. Now I show you some for uh, that some milestones. What we have made there is the hospital in Austria. It was 1992. It is a 108 meter long earth wall, and it was a very important project because the people can test it, can uh, can can feel it, and a lot of people oh. say we like to uh, sit. Uh, to to have a earth construction in the in in the house, or the capital of reconciliation in Berlin, or there it is the first uh, also, uh, uh, first ramped earth construction since uh, uh, supported the, the weight is supported on, on on the there, and it is only the local earth ramped you see the layers it is 100 layers go up seven meter high and um, and then we had also make some prefabricated elements together uh, in in a connection between wood and ramped earth because the ramped earth has a lot of thermal mass it is a very nice haptic and it is uh, there is also controlled air ventilation system in the ramped earth control, also in the in the earth wall. There the air can go through through the elements, so it is like a um, uh, like a uh, uh, yeah. There is some air can go through these uh, walls. And now um, I built my own factory for prefabricated elements. In this factory, we want to build prefabricated elements in a, in a, in a, uh, yeah, in a bigger scale. And it was uh, difficult to plan. You see, there is a lot of living houses in this area. It is the, uh, it, it's in the border between living area and the industrialization place. And um, so we had a, a very strong wall uh, to the source, it is uh, su supported uh, 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 earth, ramped earth how, uh, wall, 60 centimeters, and uh, the roof and the crane is laying on the earth structure. And uh, the centrum of this uh, factory is this uh, self-developed uh, machinery for printing or to, to, to ramp uh, panels in a long scale. It is about a shattering, about 40 meters. And uh, there the machine is filling in the material in the shattering and automatic uh, uh, climatic rammer are ramming layer on layer. Uh, and so it is very important to, in our, uh, in Europe, uh, that the, the it is a, a, it's expensive, so you, we have to use uh, machinery because if you ram it by hand, it is very hard work. It is, um, takes long time and it is in Europe very expensive. And uh, another very important project was the Ricola Herb Center in Laufen. It is a factory, 110 meter long, 30 uh, meter bright and uh, 12 meter high, and it is uh, constructed with 670 big earth elements Producted what you have seen before. Um, it is one block is about um, 4,500 kilo, and all the material what we used for this uh, earth project is was available in, in a circle of eight kilometers. You see the Ricola Kreuter Zentrum, the argil or clay, the, um, uh, uh, the gravel, and, uh, and everything is, and also the factory was uh, three kilometers from the site. Then we uh, um, mixed uh, the components of clay, bricks, uh, uh, clay, gravel and like this and um, and first by hand to show them how to build and then we we 
we mix the material in a normal uh, concrete mixer only with water, no cement. It is only the gravel mix, the earth and the excavated material mixed only with water. And it is about, in this condition, it is about 8% uh, moisture. It is very dry. And then this moisture, this gravel you put into the machinery, then you ram, you ram these layers, layer on layer. Then you remove the shattering. Then you cut the elements. You pull it out with crayon and then to store it uh, in, 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 a, in a hole. This here you see about 470 elements. They are waiting for, for um, constructed on site. It, they dry themselves. So it needs no energy for drying or like this. And it is real poor earth. And then you take the earth blocks, then you set this block and block over with a layer of clay plaster. And uh, there you have, uh, uh, you fix it, then the joint, you can make it wet with water and with the same material, you can ram it, you don't see it again. So this wall are constructed with uh, hundreds of blocks, big blocks together. So you can see it is only one, uh, one wall. Another very important project is uh, this Alnatura campus in Darmstadt. Here it is uh, a difference because uh, there it is the wall, you can see it inside and outside. So, um, the, the, so it was necessary from uh, in Germany uh, to, to get the Zulassung Einzelfall and it was necessary to make an isolation. And so we make an isolation in the middle with foam glass gravel. It's ramped in one block and inside you can see the, it is some pipes also ramped in the material for cooling and heating the, the, the house. Then the elements are constructed un, uh, in, in near 300 meters on near the, 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 the building site. Then the big blocks, um, you lift it by crane, 12 meter high, the block is about, four meters 70 uh, long and uh, one meter high. You, you set up and it is fixed to the, to the construction of wood and concrete. And um, the next uh, step, what, what I think that is the future to build constructed with poor earth wall blocks, houses and in a big scale and now we make an um, uh, experiment in our own workshop to build an um, uh, uh, earth house with um, earth blocks prefabricated, 35 centimeters supported, uh, so the weight is on there. And um, it is uh, that you move the blocks to the side by crane, you fix it, with only with clay plaster. And um, for three people are working uh, in two days, one floor, then the, the ceiling is coming up and then the next. And um, so it is possible to use this material as a building system. It is mostly now we have always used ramped earth because of architectural design, but for future, it is necessary to reduc uh, reduce the CO2 and, and all this performance to really build in a big scale a block like concrete blocks, but only earth blocks, non-stabilized earth blocks. And uh, why we don't build more with earth? Because there you see, uh, if you compare it brick wall together with earth, uh, earth and poor wall. So, you can read yourself, it is only the brick different is the price. In the moment we have, we are always make uh, work in prototypes. There is not 
no earth industry behind. We have no lobby. So we have always, we have to deal a lot. And so it is the price in the moment, it is very high. But I'm, I think it is in future, it get the price low down and for the normal uh, uh, construction material, the price goes up, what you know. And now it's a very important part is issue is the how to let the earth construction that you can see it outside in also in rainy season. And it is, um, I say, it is the controlled er erosion. You, you make the ramped earth construction with brick layers and it can a little bit erode it. So it changed a little bit the surface, it, it get more rough, but it doesn't matter if the, the water is running onto the um, surface and it goes down. So you see a lot of uh, experience worldwide with brick layers to reduce the erosion. It is not a new idea, it is only a new uh, thinking and it is more a psychologic problem to calculate the erosion as a technical problem. You see, the, if we make a, 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 so lime a plaster layers, so it is more cheap and it's, at least it is the same reaction if you make a, a brick layers. What it is need for future? It is needs a lot of research to develop the earth construction. We make a lot of structural, uh, uh, um, uh, also research work, as is the, 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 the house, the strength of the earth, the fire protection in combina combination with wood. And I think the future of really a sustainable building in earth construction is a connection between uh, earth, poor earth, supported and uh, with uh, wood construction, because it is um, both uh, the, the is uh, it it works very well together, and it is also very important the um, this research by also the architectural design. We have to find new solution to develop the earth construction to find to find a new solution. It is not enough to say, uh, uh, instead of concrete or brick, we take earth. It has to, if we, 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 are, we, if we work with earth, with earth, so we have to, to, to look um, to, and to develop the, also in design. So we have make uh, some activities in Austria. And it is very important is there is not enough labor work. All our labor, special labor, we have to uh, educate ourselves. It is necessary to have more uh, um, so craftsmanships and um, that the, the building industry can change to the earth construction because if there is no um, skilled workers enough, so the the real, the big player would not change to the earth construction. So it is the education of skilled workers is very important for future. And all the information, these are uh, only for information to the, to, to, to what we have uh, right on books. And at my last, uh, 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 my last uh, slide today is what <laughs> in the beginning you have asked would you like to live in an earth house? And if the Basel Cantonal Bank makes uh, 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 adventures, uh, Werbung for, and this woman asked, and how does your dream home look? And he said, living with my family in a clay, clay house. So it is really a paradigm wechsel. We have to real, find new solutions to build in earth. And uh, it is only the first step. And we had 10 generation, we need 10 generation to dest destruct, um, to, to forgot the earth construction. And we have not time, a half generation to develop the earth construction new. Thank you very much.
big applause in the room. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, there are, uh, there are uh, somebody says very interesting work. And I, I go for the questions in the chat. I just, they're just popping in in this very moment. Have the early buildings been monitored in terms of durability? Somebody wants to know, what is the expected design life? And is there any maintenance regime needed, especially considering future climate conditions, as we are talking about floods and heavy rain and uh, extreme uh, heat, etc. So looking back and looking to the future, can you tell us a bit more? Um, the most important in earth construction, uh, earth wall uh, needs a very good boots and a good hut. But uh, if, if the, the rain is going on the wall, it depends on the controlled erosion. So it, mm -hmm. you can, uh, and also each house, if you build in earth or in brick or in concrete, it is necessary that it is dry, that it is water uh, resident, resident. And for the durable uh, situation, I say that the earth construction is more durable as concrete. Why? Because if you, if you uh, uh, plan and if you, um, uh, because uh, if you work with uh, earth construction, then you have a, a smaller limit because the limit is not so high. So you have to develop uh, uh, with this uh, smaller limit. And you see in history, old building, if there, the hut is very well, as well, if there no is raining uh, comes there, the, the, the house are standing long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I think it is the durability is uh, it's not not smaller as in other other building. Mm -hmm. um, and many people congratulate you to the presentation. They like it very much. Um, there's another question. Somebody says in the 80s and 90s, Grenoble was one of the uh, cities that have been known for rent earth construction. Is that still the case? What has happened during the last 30, 40 years? Um, I think I was in, in, uh, in Grenoble, uh, look at there in the 80 years, if I start with this, uh, and I have, um, I, I, in this, it was a very uh, wonderful uh, initiative, and it was a really, and it is also supported from the uh, Francesish government uh, to do the, with, but um, what is, uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, we have not enough trust to the earth construction. Mm -hmm. Also we, we should uh, get more trust to the earth construction. We should take, make more research work and to, 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 to um, yeah, it's, it is what I've said before, it is, um, it was a very good initiative, but it should be scaled up uh, with, uh, or, or what say, it's a pity that it is not enough uh, construction uh, contractors are in the world who can really build uh, earth construction in a big scale. And this is very important to find a way for that. Yeah. And uh, somebody uh, talking about research and proof, somebody asks, how does the material and the building behave in a seismic area? So we uh, talked about earthquakes uh, earlier, yeah. etc. So, so what about... Uh, uh, for me, is um, the the to build in a, a sure uh, in a, a, a seismic area. It is not a question of material. It is a uh, it is a question a question of intelligence, building intelligence. Because you need a uh, 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 res uh, yeah what's it some uh, structure and uh, you can uh, make reinforcement in the wall. And uh, because there is a lot of worldwide, a lot of uh, earth construction also in seismic area, but we have to, to find, um, yeah, uh, the right uh, components between uh, technical design and architectural design. Mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the right windows or the like this. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. I have a very last question. People are, uh, go on commenting uh, on your presentation. I have a very last question. You talked about the prices so high. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's enough earth or there should be enough earth for more building. But what kind of laws and regulation should change? Do you talk about CO2 price? Do you talk about other tools? What must be changing immediately in order to really foster fruitfully the work with ramped earth? Also it needs um, uh, uh, also more develop, uh, more uh, research work because we are also working in prototype situation and prototype situation is always more expensive uh, uh, like like a normal building. It uh, it uh, uh, it is uh, to develop. It is very important to to le to develop a, a building system. Also to building what I have show you this uh, these prefabricated houses. So there we can really, if we we build this in a big scale, the price goes down. And very important is um, that the price uh, from the, uh, um, the 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 normal material goes up. Then the 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 uh, the earth uh, uh, the earth construction will get more cheap because it is uh, the, the material what we use is excavation and excavation in future is a big problem because the, 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 the place are get smaller we have to go deeper into the ground and this uh, this excavation we have a problem to depos deposit or like this and um, and uh, the excavation is the most important uh, uh, most important uh, rohstoff or material for the earth construction martin we are so we have one question from the room we have many other questions in the chat maybe later you can have a quick look in the in our chat and yeah. maybe you can answer to some of these questions there but there, there's a, a nice lady in the background of our can you uh, plug your microphone Yes. Um, And bonjour. quickly into say who you are. Yeah. Uh, bonjour, je suis Christine Lecomte, je suis présidente de l'Ordre des architectes euh, de France. Je voulais juste réagir aux propos de Martine par rapport à l'expérience de Grenoble et du laboratoire Cratère qui continue aujourd'hui et qui euh, fonctionne très bien, mais également euh, exprimer ce qui se passe aujourd'hui euh, dans le Grand Paris où euh, les terres excavées euh, du métro euh, qui va émerger autour de, du Grand Paris Express en fait vont euh, sont travaillées aujourd'hui dans une usine pour fabriquer des briques de terre crues ah. compressées euh, et ça c'est à l'initiative d'une agence d'architecture française qui s'appelle Jolie Loiret euh, qui travaille avec un laboratoire et avec euh, des entreprises donc en fait ce que dit Martine on peut y arriver en, en travaillant sur les investissements des États, par exemple, ou des collectivités lorsqu'il y a des grands travaux, et en travaillant sur ces matières premières qui sont pour l'instant des déchets et euh, s'en servir pour euh, fabriquer de la matière. Donc nous, maintenant, on, à Paris, il y aura une usine. Voilà. Okay, thank you very much. I tried to summarise in English what I got. Uh, um, uh, did you understand the French, Martin? Uh, I, 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 I did not understand the French, but uh, I know what she wants to say and what to say. And uh, I think this initiative from Grenoble and uh, Lorgeret also in, in the metro in, in Paris, it is a fantastic project and a fantastic initiative. I was in, involved in the first time, but now uh, this is what we use, uh, what we need. It is... For me, it is important. I don't want to scale up my con uh, my my company. I want to scale up the earth construction worldwide. And so, <laughs> such an initiative of uh, uh, Crater in Grenoble. They are working since really 40 years. Uh, I know the the guys there, and they make really a wonderful job. But I think it is uh, it should be continue. That it been it. The problem is that the earth construction has no lobby, and so it is, for, uh, it is very important that also from the pol political uh, side there is come some support, and uh, so that 
we should really scale up this and and that's uh, I, martin yeah, yeah the you. message is the me at least the message here in the room and in the web is understood and i think the uh, architectural conseil d'europe is a very heavy uh, uh, how can i say supporter yeah. of the idea that's of good. using uh, these natural materials thank you very much for your presentation we are very happy that we uh, it sh it seems to be open source so thank you very much for sharing we wish you all the best as the ambassador for your work uh, globally. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank you very much. Ciao. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, from this excellent architectural practice, we are coming now to our next session, Excellent Architectural Projects. And I'm very happy now to introduce Anders Lendager to you. Um, but before I do so, I have another Slido question, of course. One of the last ones of the day. Is the place you live in um, well adapted to climate change and to extreme weather events? Because we are deriving all the subjects today, of course, to the climate subject. So also the excellent architectural project. So we would like to new, uh, know from you on slido.com, uh, code 234, uh, are you the places you live in? Uh, that can mean uh, the region, the city, or even the house. Uh, is it well adapted to climate change? Hmm. Very few is one and very high is five. So like many times, in the, the middle is in the middle. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, almost two, almost, oh yeah, 70 percent, percent, so, mm, more or less, uh, but well adapted is only five percent, so there's definitely room for improvement. Thank you very much for sharing, and now coming uh, to Anders, he's re absolutely recognized as a sustainable pioneer, and he's pushing the boundaries to make the Danish construction industry more sustainable. I skip what there's much to say about him. He's always sitting on many advisory and other boards. So I leave the stage for you, Anders. We are really looking forward to your 10 minutes presentation. I know you are there. <laughs> I've seen I'm it already. Thank you so much. I just need to find the presentation. Um, yeah, we have a problem always that we have black columns all over. Shall we do the presentation? We stick. We we start the presentation from here, and you let us know when we click the next slide. I think the slide is on now, right? Yeah. If it's not disturbing, we have a black column in the uh, on the very top. If that doesn't disturb you, we can go on. I can uh, stop sharing and try again. No, no, that won't change. Either you do it with a black uh, uh, um, top or we do it. No, no, it won't change. Or we do it from here. Let's just decide. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Well, let's do it from here because you have that beauty uh, in your whole visual uh, organization. So let's go for that. We started from here and you talk over it. All right. Well, it's a, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to be here. Um, it's, a, it's a very important conference uh, for sure. Um, what we're looking into now is, uh, is an acceleration within sustainable change and uh, circular economy and recycling. And, and this wonderful presentation that we just had uh, from Rao is, uh, is, uh, is, is really wonderful. And I support that uh, really a lot. We, we, are, we are trying to do the same uh, with some projects. So I need to, to reach out. I can see with this special list has done it their whole lifetime. So it's wonderful. And thank you so much for focusing on, on earth in, in that sense. Um, I have only uh, a few time uh, here, 10 minutes. Um, I'm an architect. I've been working the past 10 years with uh, converting uh, another type of resource. Take, please take the ne next slide. Um, from, from waste to resources. And, and so one place of, of really harvesting materials is, uh, is to, uh, to look into the, the urban context that we have now uh, and see how we can harvest it. Could you please change the slide? We are working on it. If it doesn't work, in case, we come back to your presentation. Sorry for, uh, we are doing our best. Yeah, great. So here we are. So, so, so one of the one of the future thinkers, uh, Buckminster Fuller, he had this objective of looking about what innovation really are. And for me, this has been a kind of an inspiration to create a totally new type of organism or business in in the, the building sector. Usually, architects are only architects, engineers are only engineers, and so forth. 
And to really make this change towards a circular economy and a new way of building, we need to create some new vehicles. And, uh, and my own company is, uh, is not only architects, uh, we are also builders. We create uh, sustainable materials, we harvest waste, we do innovations, and we also do business models where we create new potential, raise capital, and, and make a platform for acceleration and, and scaling uh, these types of materials, these types of, of architecture. And I think that was the message that I got from Buckminster Fuller of how we need a totally different complex organism to move forward. Please take the next one. So one of the first projects that we've done, Upcycle House, uh, we did this seven years ago. Uh, we wanted to only build it uh, with waste materials that was kind of repurposed in a new way so we could build with it. Please take the next slide. It's a, it's a, it's a project that's built for, uh, for 1.7 million Danish crowns, which is a really low budget. It's the same price as a type house. And the interesting part is that all the materials that you see here is basically waste that was converted. At that point, there was no industry at all. So actually building with these materials from cork tops, uh, from, from the wine industry to, uh, to bricks or to aluminum sheets from beer and soda cans were a new way of thinking. And, and what it gave us was 86% uh, CO2 saving with a life cycle assessment compared to a benchmark house and it didn't cost anything more. So please take the next slide. So, so the fact in the matter was that all of a sudden it showed us a way of working with these materials and the containers, which is the base construction here was not a container architecture. It was the fact that you are using a surplus, a waste fraction from one industry and introducing it to a new industry where it was a concrete column or a steel column that was made out of a, a container. And if you did that with all materials in the building sector, you would all of a sudden save a lot of CO2. Please take the next one. So uh, the idea here was how could we scale this idea, make it more commercial? And at that point, we could see that we couldn't find materials anywhere where we could uh, follow this idea by upcycling windows, concrete, bricks, wood, uh, textile or plastic. Please take the next slide. Uh, it wasn't possible at all. But this showed a new type of architecture where it was actually possible. It was sold for a decent price, a family moved in, and all of a sudden we had a platform seven years ago where we wanted to scale this. Please take the next slide. And the next slide again. So the quest for making this scalable uh, moved into a new position in Denmark uh, five, six years ago where we started to take uh, a capital fund in, make a new economic base structure, so we could do these types of commercial housing projects. Please take the next slide. So everything is about handling risk and handling economy and making great and beautiful architecture. And this is our, our kind of business model, we call it the Nexus organization, where we both have a management consultancy business that are handling businesses transition into circular economy, we have architects designing and drawing the new innovations and the buildings. And we have Linear Up, which is a material company that makes the sustainable products and innovations and realize them so they live up to durability, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to livability, CO2 and economy, and also giving guarantee on the products. Take the next one, please. So one of the first projects we've done large scales is the resource rose. Um, it's harvesting uh, brick waste, uh, aluminum waste, wood waste, and converting it into an apartment building and a row house building. Take the next slide, please. And looking at bricks, they become quite a big problem because uh, they take a lot of CO2 to, to produce, um, but uh, unfortunately, they don't live that long. And in most countries in Euro, Europe, the mortar is stronger than this, the stone, which means that we cannot recycle them unless they are before the 60s. So one of the most important recycled components has become locked in its own performance with mortar that's like concrete, and so how to recycle it. So even though we could see we could save 700 grams per stone of CO2, we needed a new way of going about this. So please take the next slide. 
So we found out that a way of doing this, this is a, a film that should start. Um, we needed to cut them out um, and uh, use them as bigger building blocks. So in, in Danish tradition, we're building with Lego. This is kind of a Brio, which is the next size of bricks, you can say. And all of a sudden creating these uh, exclusive patterns with these uh, staple, very big blocks that was, was weighing or weighing 300 kilos a, a piece, but is saving a tremendous amount of CO2. Please take the next slide. Here, we became both the designers, the innovators, and also the manufacturers and starting uh, a whole manufacturing of this. Today, we have designed a robot that can cut out these bricks. So we, we have a, a digital scan of a building and then we cut them out with a robot so we can lower the cost and are actually competitive with the cheapest kinds of bricks in the market, but with a high CO2 impact, 100% recycled material, a very low CO2 impact and a potential of scaling this going forward, moving um, um, empty houses from outside of the city to new building blocks inside the new city, scaling this. Take the next slide, please. So what did we learn from this? Well, uh, certainly we learned uh, to create a new type of building component, but this is a movie, maybe you could start it. But we also designed a new type of community where the families moving in here are following up on living sustainable. They know all the stories about uh, the recycling, where the bricks come from, where the wood comes from, the allotment gardens that are on the roof where you can harvest your own crops. And, and they have a totally different uh, community. Please take the next slide. Obviously, um, we are really proud that it's nominated for the Mies van der Rohe Prize, Prize, which is one of the, the most uh, highly respected prizes of architecture, but it's basically a house made out of waste. So there's a whole new notion about what sustainability and aesthetics are. And on the next project here, please take the next slide, we try to go even further. Uh, it's won a lot of prizes, but we also try to make everything out of uh, recycled and upcycled concrete, um, waste concrete from the area, so it didn't have to move anywhere that needed to be crushed. But instead of putting it in the roads, we put it in the house and casted the whole building with this, uh, this concrete, saving 10% uh, uh, CO2 on the aggregates, but also saving 1,000 tons of waste material. All the windows you see here, please take the next slide, and the wood, all the surfaces you see here is wood, is waste, that been, that's been upcycled to high performance new building components. So these windows are two layered uh, thermal windows that are 15 years old, that together uh, as a double thermal window creates this high efficient window, but has a super low CO2 impact. This, ha this has not been done before. And we did, did that in this project. And now today we have an upcycle window production that is scaling in Denmark. Um, please take the next slide. And again, thinking about the interior, we don't have any paint, we don't have any fillers. It's all wood, concrete, and natural materials that doesn't off-gas. So the whole reach list and not having VOCs flying around in the building has also been a very important uh, part of this project. That also includes that you can have your own business within your own house. So you have an economy embedded in, the, in, the own, in your row house, which may, makes it very robust. Uh, for the families moving in. Please take the next slide. And an important thing is also that we have no vacancies. It's the fastest rented out houses, the two project I just showed. Uh, everyone wants to stay there. And we can see now that, that it's a better investment for, uh, for our client than any other, other of the uh, row houses and apartment projects in, in this uh, area, which makes it a very, very good investment. Please take the next one. So, and the next one again, and just to see some of the CO2 results, um, just on the windows, we saved 87% CO2 just on the window component compared to a benchmark. It could be even more refined. Please take the next one. We saved um, or used 560 square meters of, of uh, waste windows, but uh, please take the next slide. And we also saved uh, almost 600 tons of waste uh, to this building. 
So again, the brick wall, almost 40% CO2 um, saved on this project. On the next project we're doing, we're saving almost 70% CO2 compared to a normal brick wall. Next one, please. And just take the next one again. So on the, on the concrete, we saved between uh, five to 8% CO2 uh, compared on, on where in the building we, we casted the, the concrete. Please take the next one. We saved 900 tons. And here again, just a slide of some of the other components. And what you see here is that the reduction of CO2 is so high. So when we do use waste as a resource, we move between 50 and 90% CO2 reduction. So the impact is so high and the efficiency is so high and the economy is so low, or at least it's benchmarked with the economy that we're building with today, which makes this kind of an obvious choice for scaling in the, in the coming future. Take the next slide, please. Here, just some images um, from the roof a terrace. And here again, an upcycle house uh, show, no, please take the next slide, yeah. Uh, that we are upcycling almost 70% of the materials, saving almost 50% CO2 for the whole project over a lifetime. So it's pretty aggressive saving only in the first year of building, uh, which we are quite proud of. And another thing is that all these materials has now become an investment case from uh, a large entity of investors. So now there are, there are factories being scaled. Um, so we can build with it in Denmark and in the Scandinavian countries, which is an offspring of the normal economy. It's not a philanthropic project in any way. It's 100% commercially driven. Next slide, please. Here, just the, the cost benchmark. Uh, it's 3% uh, cheaper to build this way uh, than a normal uh, row house uh, uh, that we started with the life cycle costing uh, that we have all the data on. The next one, please. We are slightly over time on this. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll I, stop I, I here. I'm totally impolite to interrupt you, but, but can you squeeze it up a bit? I'll, I'll, I'll just stop here. That's fine. So the, the concept here is that we are saving CO2, a lot of CO2. We are creating local jobs by harvesting local materials. It's a cost neutral economy that creates new circular potential uh, economies, innovation startups, but also production. And then we can see that it's a better uh, business case. There is no vacancy. Uh, people want to live sustainable. They want to feel it. They want the narrative and they want to drive that, uh, that philosophy further uh, up. So after the building is built. So I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you. Anders, thank you so, so much for your fantastic work. There are dropping questions in, in the chat. Maybe you were so kind to answer them in the chat. They are sometimes technically, so maybe you could relate to the questions. I only have a very quick question to you. The new European Bauhaus, it's a general one, is so much about the holistic approach to quality. Uh, and in the aesthetics. So if you had one lever to address, how to bring sustainability and quality and aesthetics, to, uh, aesthetics together, what would that lever be? Uh, I'm really happy that you're giving me such an easy question to end with. Um, <laughs> Can you make it fast? <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think uh, obviously aesthetics is a very, very important part of, of doing sustainable buildings. We've seen a lot of tries where the aesthetics is not uh, something that is very high and therefore uh, not very interesting uh, to scale up. We need it to become a beautiful solution and therefore the architect's work is extremely important that we, we show that it's a more beautiful solution than what we have done previously. But it's also important to say that a very big difference is that all of a sudden these materials, just like the earth ramp buildings, are layered with a narrative. There's a story to tell. And not very many of, of, of us lives in building where we actually know where the bricks come from, where the window comes from, that it's an interesting story that talks about sustainability and that changes. And that in itself is a very important uh, um, uh, aesthetics to bring forward. Mm -hmm. 
it was totally fascinating that you say that people coming into the houses, they change their sustainability uh, behavior on a holistic level. So in also in other disciplines, I think this is very interesting. I learned the same thing from the e-mobility sector in the auto industry. It's exactly the same. You drive an e-car, suddenly you change the way you eat food. So, so Anders, thank you very much for this great work. We go directly and, and I hope you stay with us in the chat to answer the questions. We uh, hand over to Bernd Wilczek, another fascinating guy from the school department at the Austrian Bundesimmobiliengesellschaft. Hello. Great to have you, Bernd. Hello. I try Hello. to I try to share my so. Is it okay? Do you see my 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 slides? Can you, can you go to the first slide? Then we see okay. if it works. I go to the first slide. Okay. Do you see my first slide? Can you make it a uh, page full, full page, oh. full screen? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I see it Not full yet. screen. That's why. <laughs> okay. Shall we start it from here? Okay. We started from here. And okay. You, no problem. Uh, direct us through. Thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, my name is Bernd Wilczek. I'm the head of the, uh, the school department in the Bundesimmobiliengesellschaft in Austria. And it's an honor for me to talk to you because it's, uh, um, we are a public client and we, uh, yeah, we work a little bit different to an architecture office. And uh, so I will talk about how, how or who we are. Can you take the next one? Okay, we are uh, owned by the Republic of Austria and one of the largest property owners in Austria. Our proper, uh, properties are, except two, one in, in New York and one in, in uh, Switzerland, in Austria. And we develop, develop and operate uh, for our properties in Austria. We make constructions and project management and asset management for all our properties, especially for building for public use. And this is one of our, our core businesses. Uh, can I take the next one? Because about 500 to 600,000 people learn, study, work, live and move around in big uh, buildings every day. Um, that's uh, for Austria, that's a lot. Our asset, can I take the next one? Can I take the next? Okay. This is the core business. Schools, universities, special use objects, office and residential buildings. And uh, I show you this because we have a wide range, uh, a great diversity in our uh, uh, portfolio. And uh, I would show you a lot of um, houses and properties. And we have about 3 million square meters letable space just in the 400 school um, properties. Can you take the next? All 21 universities are owned by the Bundesimmobiliengesellschaft. This is also about 2 million square meters. Special use uh, objects, there are about 900 properties uh, and uh, it's like high courts, jails and something like that. Can you take the next? And office and resi residential buildings. This is about 500 and 50 properties. Uh, this is also a lot of buildings um, in our portfolio for a small country like we are. Can I take the next? And this is also the Bundesimmobiliengesellschaft. This is flag tower, cemeteries, uh, churches, mountain bases, sausage stands. And uh, can you take the next? And that's why our strategy uh, is not so easy uh, to create or was not easy so to create. Um, and uh, we were talking about uh, sustainability means developing sustainable properties for generation and taking responsibility. And if you've seen the, the big diversity in our portfolio means you must think about it uh, and make a new strategy for all our buildings for the next generation. Year one is the strategic organization or orientation, okay, the seven, uh, 17 sustainable development goals. And then we choose two ways. The first way is the holistic building program. And the holistic building program is a group wide sustainable minimum standard for new buildings and general refurbishments. This is, this is very interesting because it's an own one, um, an own, um, strategy for all our buildings which we create new and for all architect 
uh, we will fi we find uh, especially um, about open from open architectural competitions. So you have there you have the climate active certification plus about 50 criteria for the next sustainability also the, for the sustainability. It's it's about exit from fossil um, fossil fuels. It's energy and cost efficient buildings and so on. And the second way is for ex uh, existing buildings. We have about 2000 properties in our portfolio and you need um, to, to think about strate strategy for existing buildings. And this is the 10 big points for the first. And this is really something we are really proud of it. Exit from fossil fuels by 2025. Uh, this is a heroic uh, um, work, but we, we try this. The next one is photovoltaic initiative for the, can you take the last one? Back to the last, please. Yes. Um, take the, the photovoltaic initiative and uh, for the next generation. Also the energy efficient buildings um, because you have to, to work with the whole building for the future. And there are few four goals for the energy reloaded uh, goals. And the rest is also circular economy, urban mining, climate resilient planning and building, land consumption and floor ceiling, all about this. This is really very important, but this is the, the measure for all architects, for all planning teams, which are working for us. And I have about three uh, examples now at last. Can take the next one. Um, one is the um, Med Marianen campus in Vienna. It's about uh, 350 million project and Europe's largest reuse project um, and very, very big and very, very interesting for us. Also, we have a lot of buildings uh, like uh, the Bildungsquartier Aspen, which um, are already made or have the interest from the, the 10 big points or the strategy uh, we choose for our company. And last or last one is also the University of Education in Salzburg. And like this, there are a lot of smaller and bigger um, projects we already have in our uh, portfolio. Can you take the next? And this is one of the largest we had for the next, uh, yeah, at least three to five years. It's a development area close to the center in the third district of Vienna. It's about 11 hectare development area and about uh, two hectare park area. It's about 250,000 cross floor area. And this is one of the biggest projects we have uh, now in Austria um, to try to put all 10 peak points for sustainability um, into a project. Can I take the next one? It's like um, like to do everything together. It's a um, it's a common common network. It's a um, it's a um, uh, district heating. It's a geothermal probes. It's a engine network. And this is to try to be responsible for the next generation for all our properties uh, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bernd. A big applause from the room. Um, there are no questions in the chat so far, but I have one question. As far as I got to learn Austria and especially Vienna, you're not very good in demolishing things. You want to keep the cultural heritage up. This is, seems to be a cultural ing ingredient of the city as far as I experienced it as a non-architect. So, but what kind of regulations are very helpful in your context to organize reuse in a very sustainable and a very aesthetic way? That's really a why problem. Are you laughing? <laughs> why, why are you laughing? That's really question? a problem. Um, also, um, that's that's why we choose to take our own guidelines for the for the re, uh, re, refurbishment and the, the new buildings and the existing buildings. We can't wait uh, be, uh, that all our measures are okay for us. So we take the new guidelines, we take the new uh, 10 points, we, we take the holistic building project and start for the future for our properties. 
Um, thank you very much, Bernd. There was another question popping up, but not in the chat. Uh, therefore, I cannot uh, uh, direct it to you directly now. Maybe you were so kind to put the question uh, again in the chat, whoever it was. Okay. And maybe then you can ask uh, answer in the chat band. So in the meantime, I would hand over to the next speaker if you're fine with that. Oh, thank it's you. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for this inspiration because we have three other more highly inspiring speakers to go. I already quoted you in the morning, Dirk. Dirk van Pape, he's an urban designer at he's CEO at the Urbanisten. And if we talk about the subject water, you have very innovative ideas, but not only that, he's responsible or has been responsible amongst many other things for the Rotterdam Climate Adoption Strategy and as a highly engaged advocate for sustainability. So, uh, very happy to hand over to you now. Thank I hope you're there. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Hope the, uh, the connection is okay. Can you hear it me? Is. All right. Yes, we can uh, hear you probably. Probably I'll have to share a screen. Okay. Um, I, I got um, a message that I can't share screen because another... Oh, it works out. Sharing. We are starting it from here. It's uh, perfectly fine. We can see it properly. And you just go on talking. Now you are frozen, I think. Let's reconnect with you. Right. Now we can hear you again. I still, and we see the still image. Don't have a, I still don't have a screen. Uh, sorry. Ah, you can't see it. We I can don't see, see anything. It. Ah, you can't see anything. Hmm. Hmm. So what do we do now? Yeah, now I can. Um, uh, yes, you can. I, okay. ha I have a screen right now. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and I just say next slide, and then uh, I think you now can take over, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Well, first of all, um, and uh, you can immediately get to the next slide. Um, thanks uh, for um, for the invitation to join. Um, I think, um, can I have the next slide, please? Yes, it's there. Your Wi-Fi connection is not too tough. So. Yeah, I still have, um, I'm still looking at the first screen, which makes it a little can bit more do, difficult. Uh, uh, can we do it differently? Do you have the slides uh, printed out or something like that? Because we can be sh make sure that we see the next one. You just sh should be able to stick to your narrative. What, what, what might be a possibility too is that you stop sharing and I, I share my screen. That worked when we when Yeah, we but started. maybe not if your uh, Wi-Fi connection is not that stable. Okay, let's try it once more that you share it. If it doesn't work out, we might take the next speaker, reorganize and come back to you. Okay. To fix the Wi-Fi uh, connection. But can you see my screen right now? Not yet, but you start screen sharing now. I think it's too low. I'm I'm, sh I'm sharing now. Okay, let's try it once more for the first slide. If it doesn't work out, we go to the next. We come back to you. But you don't see my screen right now. Yes, we do. We see it. Uh, Everybody can okay. see it. We are fine. And then it's fine. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, then uh, after this small technical delay. Um, I would just say that I'm, I'm very happy to join uh, uh, today. Um, fortunately, I wasn't able to come to Brussels. Um, I think the, um, the invitation came um, partly because our water square in Rotterdam uh, was uh, one of the 20 projects that was selected in 2018 uh, in the publication uh, 20 architectural projects against climate change. Um, that was already a, a big honor for, for me with my office, the Urbanistan. Um, well, heading toward Glasgow, definitely the last summer um, showed us again how enormous the impact of climate change is throughout the world. Um, you might say specifically larger Delta cities were. Um, having the impact of uh, sea level rise, but we also had intense fires in Greece. We had floods in Germany and Belgium and so on and so on. So let's uh, be, be clear about that. And I think everyone in the audience would 
immediately agree that it's time to act. And uh, being a landscape architect and urban designer accompanied by architects, I think it's clear that, uh, that, that it's time to act. And definitely our profession um, has a clear task here to contribute to um, making our world more sustainable, which, uh, well, when, when, when it comes to how we, uh, with my office, the urbanist and approach this uh, cry for action, you can say that we start with uh, the question, how can we make our cities more climate adaptive? And, and, and of course, it's about uh, power and strength and policy making. It's about smartness and intelligence, but Darwin already told us that it's uh, very much about the strong that survive are the ones that are most capable of adapting to change. So that, that's an important uh, starting point for our profession working in cities. Uh, but I do want to, to uh, add to the agenda of climate adaptation and, and how to create our cities more sustainable. Uh, definitely one of my, I would call it heroes, this is Jan Gill from Copenhagen that, um, that brought in to the agenda also, how can we make our cities more attractive at the same, same time? And I think that's an important combination uh, to make. So make our cities more climate adaptive, but also make them uh, more attractive at the same time. And therefore um, uh, uh, we need uh, a spatial interventions. I think we may need to move from, from what we might, might call it the more technical solutions uh, to handle the problem uh, to uh, a more integrated, multifunctional uh, use. So we, we started already more than 12 years ago uh, advocating a, uh, uh, an architecture that we call po engaged polytechnical architecture in which the cityscape itself is a subject of design uh, on our agendas. And for, for today, uh, I didn't want to share um, uh, a lot of the projects, but since the time is limited, just wanted to uh, share um, the water square that was published uh, in, uh, in in the book uh, in 2018. Um, well, the, the the idea behind the water square, which is realized uh, the first one in uh, Rotterdam, uh, and we made the design for that. The um, the, the main idea is very simple. Um, it, it is a complicated project, but the idea is very simple. Um, it, it, it is about can we can we use uh, our cityscapes, in this case our public space, uh, for two purposes. Uh, first, and that's ninety in our country, ninety percent of the year, uh, uh, could we create a attractive and inviting public space for people to use and enjoy? Um, but the thing about the water square is, can we combine? that with water storage. So can we take, in this case it's about an abundance of rainwater, can we take that out of our technical system, can we take that out of our combined sewer system and use the public space for a temporary storage of that. This is the very simple idea that we, we, we brought um, uh, to uh, the, uh, the, the water square that was uh, realized in uh, 2014. This is the, uh, the view from, from above. Um, I'm quickly going to share uh, the design, but also definitely the, the, the ideas behind it. As you can see, it's, it's quite a, a big space. It's surrounded by, uh, by large uh, post-war buildings, uh, schools, uh, housing. There's a church on the square. And uh, as you can see, it consists of, uh, of a large public space that, uh, that is basically traffic space, green spaces, and three, um, three basins that are um, deepened. Uh, that uh, that collect uh, the rainwater, but that also create different spaces to actively use by the public. Um, well, the, the water management um, uh, is, works like this, that the, the three basins that we have on the square that have this blue colors to stress that also when it's dry, they, they take out rainwater from uh, a larger surrounding district, both the roofs of some of the buildings as well as the public spaces bring their um, their rainwater that used to go to the combined sewer now into our three uh, basins. One uh, is a very deep one um, and the other two are less deep and more shallow basins. They 
last two day receive every day rain and the big one has a bit of a, a threshold uh, so only uh, a, little, a larger a cloudburst will also fill up the third square um, then uh, after the the rain uh, uh, the three basins needs to be emptied of course to be used again as a public space the two shallow basins they just have an infiltrate table and the big one uh, is going to be pumped out into surface water the nearby canal so there's no water uh, re-entering in the combined sewer system and that's uh, of course a very important objective of the project now I took Look, some, we are going slightly over time to show you how we, we are starting to go Sorry. slightly over time now uh, uh, just to make sure uh, that you're coming to the end we are yeah. slightly over time and the sound connection is so la la so it's not a hundred percent okay well I, I thought i had the 10 minutes available uh, yeah, well, yeah we lost so much on technical was... details i'm sorry so uh, just to make sure because the the sound connection is also a bit slippery now now did we lose you so the connection got low we lost you Dirk, I'm very, I, I, I apologize very much. We just lost you to the web, uh, to the web sphere. Uh, thank you very much. Still, I want to thank you very much for the presentation because it's a fascinating example of, uh, of inspirational, uh, very innovative work. Um, is, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And, and with saying so, we are coming to Matej Celik. He's architect architectural researcher and writer and he's the co-founder of the architectural platform project in 2002 amongst many many other things program director uh, of the future architecture platform so we are looking forward to your examples of innovation in sustainable times i hope we are connected with you very very stably let's see I don't see you yet, but we see your beautiful slide. I can't hear you yet. Hello, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you for the invitation to this very interesting uh, and important conference. Um, I will present uh, the work of the people who participated in the future architecture platform program in the last six years. Uh, the Future Architecture Platform is one of the 15 European cultural platforms and it supports the work of emerging uh, professionals in the fields of architecture. Um, so we work on the level of ideas. Uh, we support the ideas of young people and uh, um, make their ideas be seen and give them a uh, voice. Um, this was uh, 28 members of the Future Architecture Platform now. We started in 2015 with uh, 11 uh, members and now there are 28. Uh, in the last six years, uh, we invited emerging talents to participate in our program of conferences, uh, exhibitions, events through open calls. And we received uh, more than 2,000 uh, applications submitted by individuals and groups. So there were more than 4,000 applicants altogether in uh, the last six years. And uh, we included uh, almost 500 uh, participants in uh, the program in Vance in uh, all this time. So the platform uh, not only mapped a range of emerging contemporary critical practices that are uh, upcoming, uh, but in general it also uh, mapped the values and uh, priorities and the project that the emerging generation is uh, seeing as priorities. And I, uh, we, we could talk about three chapters of these projects. Uh, one are the challenges that humanity is facing now, and uh, they want to address uh, every aspect of it, from uh, human rights issues to environmental and climate, climate uh, issues, and uh, they want to explore new economic paradigms. Uh, then there are uh, issues connecting to 
need to change uh, the professional architecture. And uh, uh, the, the third chapter is about how do we communicate architecture and our ideas. And if we talk about challenges facing humanities, human rights, there are several human rights uh, connected to architecture, like the right to have a home, the right to use public space, the right to participate in decision making, and uh, uh, connected to environment. Uh, we, they talk about ecological depth and environmental racism. Uh, they care about uh, fighting poverty, inequality in the world. And um, um, the, here we are also already looking at uh, the first uh, project uh, connected to that. It can, I, I will just uh, list a few projects and try to illustrate uh, what is behind uh, these four, four common, uh, applicants and ideas that we received. This is a project called Spatial Justice, and it is made by a group of uh, Mexican architects in Mexico. Uh, Sorry, Matej, you are sometimes losing the voice. The, the audio, audio is quite difficult. In case that goes on, maybe you can just yes. switch off your camera, then we don't see you, but we might hear you better. We still see the slides. So in case that gets worse, you just, just take off the camera. Um, I would just do that right now. So it's, Let's uh, try it like that. Okay, let's try it like that. Um, so in uh, the Spatial Justice Project, architects uh, try to support uh, citizens in their right to the city and uh, the right to, of people to continually build common spaces in uh, Chihuahua. Uh, they encourage community building to implement urban policies that uh, strengthen people's access to public spaces and strengthen their ability to demand uh, their rights through participatory, participatory democracy. Uh, Next project is uh, Start Park. It comes from uh, Prato in Italy, uh, developed by a multidisciplinary team. Uh, they conducted a two-year two survey and developed the concept of an urban green space whose infrastructure and services are dedicated to reuse and drainage. And they include also experiential climate change related learning activities for the local community. Um, and they are trying to implement these projects um, around us. Uh, next is uh, NUTS. Uh, NUTS stands for Natural and Urban Devices. It's a project by uh, Jose Mateo Torres from Cartagena in Spain. And it's a conceptual series of architectural additions designed to upgrade existing buildings and incorporate nature into shared public spaces. These are different devices that are embedded in existing structures. Uh, green uh, from, from plants, from uh, small forests and uh, vertical gardens uh, to appliances that are attached to the buildings. Uh, Food Cloud is a project developed by a group of Greek architects from uh, Athens. And uh, they, uh, they want to show how architecture can combat climate change by promoting new activities and spaces for socializing and interacting. Uh, it's a food exchange hub that could be uh, placed in vacant places in any city and whose goal is uh, the social and environmental benefit of the neighborhood through redistribution. People could go to food clubs, yes. Can you go maybe a bit closer? We still, it's still bubbling. Can you go a bit yes. closer to your microphone if possible? We don't see it. So you can go as, as close <laughs> as possible. But the slides okay. are perfect. We just want to continue. Okay, so uh, food clouds are places where people could go to, to drop off excess food, to enjoy a well-prepared meal with friends and uh, neighbors, uh, but also to pick up uh, free food they need from the store to participate in workshop or cook for their neighborhoods. Um, when um, talking about the architectural uh, practice, um, the emerging generation um, is thinking a lot about uh, thinking beyond buildings, how to transform architects' role uh, to, uh, to build critical awareness and uh, encourage and uh, invite societies to participate, to work together with uh, professionals. Uh, 
Um, it is about uh, developing new professional tools and uh, cultural tools, architectural, building new alliances and networks. And it is about also uh, changing education. And um, there's new need for leadership skips in architecture and less specialization and more systemic uh, approach. Uh, this is uh, NetQuest, is a, a project in uh, Western rural Norway, where there is population decline uh, that leaves towns and villages vulnerable. And it is hard to maintain social infrastructure and uh, functional communities. Uh, besides that, uh, special and environmental conditional and natural hazards exacerbated by climate change really limit land use. Uh, in this uh, context, uh, architects uh, 3RV uh, seek specific and precise spatial strategies. It's a kind of uh, rural acupuncture that has the potential to support the community by exploiting social capital, making it more resilient, uh, and also uh, more attractive to new uh, residents. Um, next project is urban forestry. Uh, it's developed by a couple of Spanish architects uh, for uh, and presented uh, to be developed in Tokyo in Japan. And they propose uh, urban forestry as a nurturing practice that could create a diverse interactions in the city. Uh, it differs from classical forestry in that its purpose is not to transform the obtained wood into goods, but to take care of the metropolitan forest. A placement in urban context, context expands the possibilities for the participation of different actors, as well as uh, the use of resources arising from tree maintenance, which also helps build different new relations uh, in the city. Matevs, we are like kind of at the end of the time frame. Can yes. you like quickly slide to your final slide with a narrative? Okay. Yes, I'm coming to an end. So this is Working Garden, a project uh, in uh, Netherlands that is addressing uh, the case in the Netherlands where we have um, a lot of uh, empty, 20% uh, of office space in suburban areas that is vacant. Uh, but facing an acute uh, housing uh, shortage. And architects propose to set up a network of productive campuses that could be compared to modern monasteries and people could here live together. But this combination provides affordable floor space and generous common areas which need new construction. Uh, this was a project where uh, researchers and pedagogues uh, asked or uh, a general assessment of the current state of the curriculum of architectural schools in Europe to develop concrete strategies for implementing positive change in architectural education elsewhere. And the last one, uh, Mapping the Margis, uh, an atlas of rural commons in modern Greece, uh, developed by Theory Lab. It's an initiative which explores multicultural heritage related to local technologies, gastronomy, culture of rural communities in modern Greece aiming to infuse them with scientific knowledge and digital uh, technologies. They map, document and identify for the first time all the women associations, local agricultural cooperatives, as well as abandoned buildings in uh, Tesprotia uh, in order to create active platform where many cooperatives can find a space to grow and uh, cooperate together. So this illustrates uh, the third chapter also of uh, challenges presented uh, by uh, young people in future architecture, uh, how we should communicate architecture and connect with the uh, wide um, public uh, in times when users and producers and of information are the same, where uh, there is a more bilateral flow of information where there is a need for new narratives and vocabularies and how to develop based on this new criticism and research and curiosities. And um, of course, there is a need to support and empower the coming generations uh, to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your input, Matevs.
Uh, I, I say it because in a lot of digital conferences, we still have infrastructural pro problems. This is not the problems of the architect. It's another ministry that is responsible for infrastructural questions uh, to develop them. So, but uh, it's hard. Uh, so thank you very much for going through. And I hope now that we have a very stable and a very good connection. We are building on the subject of future generations and future thoughts with Mar Santa Maria. Uh, she's architect and co-founder of 300,000 300, kilometers per second. And she's dedicated to many future subjects, Digitech, spatial analysis, urban planning, public policies, and many, many others. So I hope we are very vitally connected with you now. Are you I there? Hope, um, Spain. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we don't hear you yet, but in a second. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. At least the picture looks good. I'm already unmuted. Fantastic. Yeah, perfect. We'll see you. And, and probably you have got slides to share. And you have a headset. That is fantastic. We should make it a, a conditio sine qua non for the next conferences. I'm sorry, but I can't share. I cannot share my screen. It's just the board. <laughs> okay, we do it. We start the screens from here. We start the slides Thank from you. here. Okay, we start, the, but you uh, go on with your narrative. Yeah, we hope. Perfect. So uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to fit in the ten minutes that are left. So thank you very much. I I'm really honored to to be here today. So I'm going to talk from a, a slightly different perspective, which is the one that you know that it's coming from the urban planning. So we understand architecture as this extension uh, of of the urban planning. And actually, uh, someone uh, this morning talked about this idea, you're not talking about heritage. So basically, uh, what we are uh, trying to do um, is to work with the city we, we have in heritage. No? And if you go to my, to my first slide, please. We are yeah. working on it. It will be there in a minute. Okay. <laughs> So you will see the Barcelona that uh, I remember, no? When when I was more, no? That was the city that I, I was in, in everything, no? With a coastal line, with a lot of informal housing, with a city, no? That in the eighties, no? Uh, need to do, no? Uh, a lot, and no? Uh, during this, no? Uh, this process, we have built in the city the major infrastructures. We have improved our public transport. We have also build up no some metabolic infrastructures that we need no somehow to make the city more permeable we have improved a lot uh, the the heritage and at the same time we have built really singular and contemporary uh, excellent no architectural uh, pieces uh, but at the same time we work with peripheries uh, we work a lot no with with the neighborhoods uh, at the same time we rebuilt the centralities uh, inside Barcelona. We rethought no, the, the urban model. We built more facilities. And of course, no, there is this huge transformation of the, of the public space. I'm still talking, even though you cannot. Thank you very <laughs> I'm much. Afraid, uh, no, you go on talking. We work <laughs> on the slides. We don't, I don't exactly know where the bug is. We are working on it and you go on talking okay. about it. And yeah, uh, I will illustrate, <laughs> I will try to illustrate myself. Now, but the idea that even though we have been doing a lot in the city and the Barcelona, it's tried, no, or like at least, no, it's projecting, no, as a, as a really excellent case study, no, uh, to the wall, we need to think different, we need to do more. Uh, the effects of climate change in the city, you know, are, are going to be really severe. Uh, I have seen a lot of Nordic projects, you no, know, this morning, but <laughs> you can, I, I invite you, you know, to come here to Spain in summer. It's really hot, you no, know, and we are going to suffer, you no, know, I think, you no, know, uh, in a really strong way, the effect of the climate change, you no. Know? So my idea today, if I, if I had my slide with me, uh, would have been not to talk in some uh, ideas and some actions that we are uh, trying to propose through a project that you can browse online uh, in the website air uh, 300 kilometers point EU um, and it's it's not it's the project that we propose for the Catalan participation in this year Venice Biennale that was curated by by Olga Subiros 
And it's a project that even though it's talking about the huge problem that we have in Barcelona related to air pollution, we have been fined by the European Union because we are overpassing for more than 10 years the legal limits uh, regarding uh, uh, air pollution, even though no, we are tackling this, this subject of the earth, of the air pollution. Air pollution is the side B of, of the climate change. No? So it's a good way to transversalize a lot of problems that we are having today, today in cities uh, and that in the case of Barcelona are resulting into a more than 2,000 uh, people a year, a year that is dying or related to, to that. No? So which are the things that the, that the, the city needs to, needs to do? So first thing, we need to rehabilitate no, all the housing stock. And in our case, it's not, it's not a, a little part of it that we need to, you know, to, to go through this, this renovation wave, but it's the whole uh, housing stock. No? So we have areas of the city that are not protecting us from the environment where no, we can feel really the effects of the air pollution inside uh, our homes. No? So rehabilitation, rehabilitating the housing stock, it's one of the first thing that we need not to do still no? uh, as a city. We need to work also uh, on the urban uh, mixture, no? even, even though the city has been projecting no? as the well-balanced, no? well-mixed city, we we'll still experience some, some issues related to proximity and how no, people should have access no, to all the things they need for, for making no, a good quality of life. And this is very much related no, to, to being a tourist city. So this imbalance of the urban uses creates mobility. Um, also, um, I think at this point, it's not useful to have the slides. <laughs> uh, you can go to slide 17, it's where I am, to the, it's where I am now. Um, so, we, well, let's try to go to slide 17 and start Thanks. from there for the rest. Thank and you, we Katarina. Put the presentation later, we put it into the chat that everybody can see the whole presentation. I, we are so sorry. Thank no you very worries. much for uh, uh, I think it's going the most, diffi here. most difficult presentation I've ever done in my life. So, um, no. <laughs> very well, very well. Uh, Another thing now that we are trying to question from how is this image, you know, the idea of the density of Barcelona, that if you go through the next slide, you will see air pollution is in the areas you now where we have the most of the density and how this density relates, you no, know, uh, not to having air pollution, it's a really a good, a good question that, that we need to, to address. You no, know? some other strategies are related to public space, as you will see in, in the next slide. You no, know? so this idea that we need to really design uh, the green and if you go to the through through the next two slides you can see you know that in Barcelona for so many times we have been uh, working or building no this is like iconic no um a square you no know, where green was not present and it's something that we are trying to change the city to incorporating you no know, a more nature based solution and that you no know, of course if well done it's going to have positive impacts you no know, uh, on this air pollution but also that we need to still uh, being doing you no know, and and I'm not talking just solely about buildings but also you no know, of this idea that regenerating today needs to be uh, again, regenerating the public space. And what happened with the public space in Barcelona, if you go, can go through the next slide, you will see that it's highly saturated by mobility, it's highly saturated by the, you know, the activities. I'm now on slide, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, no, if you go through, you you can see. You no, know, it's it's highly saturated by the by the activity uh, itself. No, so how can we rethink? Uh, this public space again in the city it's one of our major uh, uh, no um, our major challenges if you go through 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 the slides you can see also how we need to change you no know, uh, our streets how we need you no know, to rethink you no know, uh, the urban morphology how can we rethink you no know, a, a lot a lot a lot you no know, of of issues but if we go to, to a slide uh, 27, and I'm not going to, to extend anymore, uh, one of the main things that we have been discussing no, uh, in this project is this idea that um, 
we are facing a radical transformation in cities. Mm -hmm. This transformation is very much related to technology, no? for example, no? to this idea that we need to eliminate the car from, from cities, but it's not technology that is going to provide this solution. It's the city itself. And I think it's something that we need to be really aware that the sustainable city is a city that it's not creating the mobility, it's a city that it's not displacing the inhabitants, it's a city that it's working on proximity, you know, and it's making this, this relation between work and housing, you no, know, really, really close, you no, know, and something that we have been experiencing in Barcelona, and you will see through the next three slides, it's that we are a city that that we are concentrating a lot of things in our territory, you know. Uh, and I think the Barcelona of Barcelona, it might be the case of, of a lot of cities now in Europe that you know, we are facing all these processes of collecting next generation investments. And we need to be really strategic. We need to you know to do it once, once and for all because the change you know, that we need to embrace uh, is radical. No, so what we try to propose with our with our grow work with our projects and, and other projects that we are doing in the office, it's that they, this idea that we need to understand really really well, no, the subject, no, the city that we have in our reach, uh, that we need, no, to be able to put uh, on a cartography on a map, no, on something that the architects we know really really well how to do, which are the conflicts, the impacts, and the priorities because we need to prioritize now, not the vulnerable, not the justice, no, and, no, and, and a lot no, of things that are one chance no, <laughs> a time. No? Uh, in this sense, the accuracy and the scale of this transformation, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the key. And our capacity to manage the, no, the, trans the investment no, uh, and the transformation I think it's going it's going to be really important. I'm going to be really positive, uh, no, to 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 finish, no, <laughs> this really strange uh, speech. In the sense that, in, in the room uh, today, there are a lot of architects, a lot of urban planners that I'm sure are going, are, are going to help us, no, in this mission. That it's not to embrace really this this radical change to make our cities livable, sustainable, and resilient to climate change. So you will find. The slide <laughs> here and also in our website. So thank you. Mar, thank you so very much. You get a great applause for the best improvisation, improvisation with the highest density at this very day. So we don't stress you anymore at that time of the day. Thank you very, very much for your inspirational words. Also, without slides, uh, we can uh, uh, look them up in the, ch in the chat later that day or in the pause, because now we all have a 20 minutes pause. And now you really get 20 minutes of coffee pause, getting the last sun rays outside. And we re-meet again at 15.35 in the room and online and we'll have a great scoop because Ruth Reichstein will be here uh, uh, along uh, the, the other NEBC or the NEBC members uh, this afternoon and we will take the dots together to really see how did we get so uh, far today during the conference and uh, what will be the key takeaways and the, the further discussion. So thank you all very much. See you at uh, 1534 and thank you for the technical help at all angles. Thank you. See you. <laughs>